Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today is all about Z490, it's preview day. And what we've got here is two boards from ASUS. So let's take a look and see what they're all about. Let's do this. The ASUS TUF RX5600 XT, a match made in heaven for those who are serious about 1080p gaming, incorporating advanced fan technology to improve airflow and silence without compromise. Each card undergoes rigorous testing and 144 hour validation to make sure it still performs to its best, even when pushed to the limit. Click the link in the description to find out more. So Z490, there's not a huge amount that we know at the moment, apart from what's kind of being rumoured. So that basically comes down to a refresh of Comet Lake, so Comet Lake S. Uh, that's pretty much it. What does it actually offer to the table? Well, of course, when it comes to board manufacturers, it allows them to really sort of show off new features and new technologies and things like that. So we've got the Tough Gaming Z490 Plus Wi-Fi, and we've also got the Maximus 12 Hero, Roman numerals, eh? Let's start with the tough gaming. So starting with the Z490 Plus Wi-Fi, this is going to come in two variants, the Wi-Fi variant and the one that hasn't got Wi-Fi. And I think there's going to be about a 20 to $30 or pound difference in that. I mean, looking at pricing on the Z390 uh, Plus gaming Wi-Fi, it's retailing for about 180 in the UK. So I'm guessing this is going to come out just a little bit more expensive being Z490 at launch, probably closer to sort of 200, maybe even up to about 210 or 220, depending on how kind of rich Asus and Intel want to be with it. I mean, looks-wise, style-wise, it's not for everyone. It has sort of this whole industrious look to it. And I've never really understood the Tough range. When Tough first came out, it was all about military-grade stuff and, you know, being the best it can be. So yes, sir. And I don't know, it's just kind of lost its way a little bit from there. I get why they changed from that, because it said, well, if you buy this, you get the best of the best. What, do all the motherboards that aren't part of Kind of the tough range not have that? Are they not the best? Are they are they worse? And it's just kind of evolved from there with a the tough gaming alliance and the sort of yellow colour scheme. You are going to be restricted in terms of the design. Overall, though, some people are going to love it. It does look quite minimalist, but for the price point, kind of what do you expect? You don't get any sort of armour around the memory modules, but I do feel like you should because you do get it on this top X16 slot, of which there are two X16 slots. You do have some sort of uh, PCI Express X1 slots as well. You do get M.2 on here. There's one here and one below this kind of armoured shielding. I don't understand why they didn't put armoured shielding up here as well. I don't think it would have cost that much extra money. You do have kind of all the other features that you'd expect though. You've got USB Type-C, you've got USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2. There is, according to the literature, Thunderbolt 3, but according to the box and everything else that I've got, it's a Type-C connector. So it would have been nice to have Thunderbolt 3, but I think that would just raise the price up a little bit uh, beyond kind of the reach of what you'd expect for this board. In terms of the CPU socket, it's pretty damn open. So I think it's going to do quite well with airflow, depending on your case and the setup that you've got. And there are, uh, it has got a 14 uh, phase design around the CPU socket. Delivering power to that, we have a eight pin and a four pin power connector. There's no built in IO shield, which is a little bit frustrating. I would have liked to have seen it, especially if it is gearing more towards that sort of 210, 220 mark in terms of pricing. Feature wise though, you know, it's not bad. It's not fantastic. What do you expect kind of at that price point? It has plenty of USB on the back. It still does have a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port. So I guess for anyone who's, I don't know, used to the old school way of doing things, this is going to be the board for you. And I guess that kind of entrenches its whole kind of thought and stigma being, you know, part of the tough range and being a little bit old school with it. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. But how about we move on to something a little bit higher end on the spec table? So on the higher end of the scale, we have the Maximus 12 Hero. I can just see now, in about 10 years' time, all these Roman numerals are going to get proper confusing. Even me, when I was first looking at this board, I'm like, 10, 11, yeah, 12. Maximus 12 Hero, Wi-Fi. So based on the fact that it has Wi-Fi in the name, we do know that it has Wi-Fi 6AX. There's probably going to be, I'd hazard a guess, a non-Wi-Fi module, uh, sort of model. There is, I guess a nice design to the Maximus range of boards, but they're not really changed in quite a few years. The boards still come in a black and red box. They still have, I guess, a bit of a vanilla look to them. They look great. I'm not sort of, you know, getting away from the fact of that, but nothing's really changed too much. And I'd like to see something just a little bit more. 
Now, in terms of the board itself, uh, around the CPU socket, it is looking a little bit cluttered, and that's mainly down to the heat sinks, of which it has three l pretty large heat sinks with a single heat pipe connecting it. That's obviously to keep things nice and cool in terms of the 14 phase power stage design that it has here, because as the rumors may suggest, these chips are gonna run a little bit toasty. But Zeus, have you covered there with this tiny, tiny little fan? I mean, I I'm hoping this might make a difference. Admittedly, it might be a little bit loud, but you never know. Clearly, they would have done their R&D, and hopefully it will make a difference there. In terms of other standout, I guess, accessories that come with this board, this is a little bit weird, I've got to admit. I don't even know what it is. Is it something you're meant to put on your bag or on your belt or just stop with all the apparel and the clothing accessories of Zeus? You may remember on some of their Strix boards, like I think it was a Z390F Gaming, had a little kind of clothing tag just here. Just stop, please. Stick to just clean sort of designs and stuff like that. You don't need that. So, going back to the design, the majority of the board is taken up by kind of this large heatsink area, which does cover over the M.2 slot. So once this is taken off, you'll see that we have access to the M.2 slots, which sadly are PCI Express 3.0. So when kind of Gen 4, I guess, hits the Z490 world, yeah, this board is just, it's not gonna be able to do it. So you are gonna have to look to upgrade or maybe they're gonna bring out, I don't know, a, a version two or a revision two of this board. There's a couple of other features that maybe I would have liked to have seen, like armor shielding around the, uh, the memory slots, because we do have it on these two X16 slots, admittedly not on the third one. But I think that's maybe the problem with ROG. The stack is quite muddied in terms of there's quite a few model, models that are kind of very, very close to each other. So they have to differentiate between them in terms of pricing and things like that. Pricing wise, I'm going to hazard a guess is going to be around three, between 320 and 370 pounds. So let's call it 350. So I'm around that. I mean, it's got some decent features on it. You know, we've got USB 3.2 Gen 2. We've got Type C. We've got power buttons and debug LEDs, there's plenty of fan headers, there's addressable and non-addressable RGB headers, there's Supreme FX audio, everything that we've come to expect. On the rear I.O. there's HDMI, there's plenty of USBs, there's Type-C, there's a BIOS flashback, a clear CMOS button, everything you need. It's just, I don't know, a little bit like I say, vanilla. That's not a bad thing, it has everything that you need, it looks great, but I just would have liked to have maybe seen something new. Uh, on, on this, you know, new chipset, adding in something new. I mean, it's got 5G Ethernet, which is nice, I guess, but there's other boards out there that have that. And there's other boards out there that have 10G. A lot of it's gonna come down to pricing. RGB wise, this is probably my favorite area of this board, because it kind of has this mirrored uh, panel here, which is actually gonna glow the hero branding. And then this is gonna light up RGB as well. So looks wise, it looks great. You know, the fact that it's very, very stealthy, it's gonna mix and match with any system, pretty damn nice. I just would have liked to have seen a standout feature. Maybe that's kind of going to be reserved for the formula or the extreme, the further up the stack that we go. Maybe there'll be a Z490 gene board, who knows? But yeah, I just would have liked to have seen something, I don't know, more. So there we have it, two boards which, I'm going to be honest, right, so we have another video for Gigabyte, we have another one for MSI, and their boards, they've actually brought something new to the table in terms of the design and features. With these, I just feel like Asus have maybe rehashed something very similar to what it seems like Intel may or may not be doing with the CPUs, according to the rumor mill. I just would have liked to have seen something a little bit more. I mentioned the tough gaming. I don't really know where it belongs anymore. It's kind of changed its face quite a lot. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe people kind of trust the tough brand, but it started off as one thing many, many years ago when you had the Sabertooth and some of these other tough boards. And now it's just become a bit of a bastardized love child. It's not really for me, and that mainly comes down to the color scheme. Then we have the Maximus 12 Hero. I love the board, it looks amazing, but it looks exactly like the previous board, and the previous board, and the previous board. And what I'm trying to sort of get at is, if you are a diehard, a Zeus ROG kind of, you know, lover of their products, is there enough to allow you to upgrade from what you have now to this? Generally speaking, people skip two to three generations. Has this board got enough to sort of warrant doing that? Maybe higher up the stack we go if there's PCIe Gen 4 support or maybe some more design choices, that kind of thing. Maybe that's gonna be the route to market for those types of people. I'm not necessarily saying the Hero Wi-Fi is a bad board. It looks great. It's just, I was expecting something more. Hopefully as just don't take this video too badly and they can maybe sort of take this as constructive criticism and go from there. Who knows?
let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you, are you kind of agreeing with me? Are, are these just a bit vanilla? Or am I sort of completely talking out my rear end? It'd be interesting to know your thoughts. There you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And like I say, be sure to check out our Gigabyte previews on Z490 as well as the MSI ones as well. I think you'll like them. And let me know what board you'd go for out of all these if you were going to go Z490. Until next time, cheers, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.